blue and green, just where it says use, you know, red, then circle with another color you are using or something, you know, like, it's whatever. It's your own notes. It doesn't matter, right? Don't even use colors if you don't want to. Whatever. Okay. So, lesson three is our first derivative test and increasing or decreasing functions. This continues along with the idea of extrema because now once we know where our extrema are, we can talk about is it a min or a max based on is the function increasing or decreasing around it. Okay? So, um, derivatives can be used to classify relative extrema as either relative minima or relative maxima. So, we can determine some predictable and specific behaviors for functions in our calculus journey through the mathematics of change. Sounds all philosophical there. But, okay, so example one is a big old exploration here. And will help us kind of work to understand the first derivative test. Looking down at number one, using a red colored pencil, circle all points corresponding to the local maxima of f. Do not include endpoints. Wrong way. Okay, so here's my red. I'm just going to use the dark red. Local maxima of f, not including endpoints. Gosh darn it. I'm struggling here. I keep going the wrong way. Okay, what did you come up with? C and C. That's C and A. How do you get C? Okay, well, let's reread the direction. Maxima. Circle all the points corresponding to local a. maxima. A. And, well, I think D is. Is it a maxima? Yes. It is a maximum point. Not, well, I guess it's a local maximum. Okay. It's all right. <laughs> so we are talking about A and D. C, as you realized, is a minimum. minimum. <laughs> We're not talking about endpoints. Okay. State the x value where the local maxima of f occur. That was what? X equals, a. x equals a and x equals d. At each max value, f, what does f change from as you look at each max value? f is doing what on the left and then what on the right? It's increasing and decreasing. Is that true at d? Yes. Increasing, decreasing. So here we are saying that incre or changes from increasing to decreasing. Now, the connection here, at each max value, f prime changes from what to what? So, well, f is increasing and decreasing. What is the derivative here? Zero, so well, no, as we approach it and leave it. This derivative, since your graph is increasing, what type of derivative do you have? No. What's the sign on my derivative? Positive. 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 No matter where I'm at along this left side, my derivative is positive. positive. Along the right side, since I'm decreasing away, what is my derivative? Negative. The sign on it is negative. So the connection, this is a big part of the um, first derivative test, is that as f changes from increasing and decreasing, f prime changes from positive to negative. Okay. Whatever you're using for blue. I'm not using the bright colors. I'm just using these. But using a blue colored pencil, circle all the points corresponding to local minima. minima. C. 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 That's it. Nothing else? I said don't use endpoints. B and E are just not extrema. Point. So, okay. So, state the x values where the local minima occur. X equals C. X equals C. 
at each minimum value, f changes from, so this is the function, what's it doing? Decreasing, and then it increases. It decreases to increases. So decreasing to increasing. Does that mean derivative would be negative to positive? Yep. Okay, because when you have a graph that is decreasing, that means it's a negative derivative. So the derivative change from negative to positive. Okay. At each relative local extreme value, f prime, the derivative of f, is either blank or blank. So at the actual mins and maxes. I put zero, but I didn't know okay. if constant was the right word. Zero. Because right here, the derivative... Derivatives are, well, a derivative value, like a slope value, is always a constant. But yeah, at a min or a max, your derivative is zero. zero. Or what's this catch here? Oh. That's your undefined. Because, we mentioned this earlier, it's not differentiable, yes? So I believe I have is either zero or undefined. Prefer to put D and E, you can. And maybe squeeze in the third part here. Yes. Oh, there's more blanks, so, but. Okay. Now it's using green. So whatever your third color is, sketch a tangent line, if possible, at the following points and determine their sign. So we are going to want tangent lines, if possible, at B, D, and E. Okay, so let me go back here. A tangent line at B. Well, here's B. A tangent line, what's it going to do? It's going to go something like this, right? Yes. There we go. That's a pretty decent one. Okay, so tangent line, because of the way the graph is, it does go cut through the graph. But that's considered a tangent line still. I'll fill in the blanks here in a moment. Oh, okay. Okay. Tangent line at, what else did we say? D. It does not exist. I can't do a tangent line at D because it is a Cusp. sharp point. Cusp. Hard point. Okay. Tangent line at E. Tangent line at E is going to be a horizontal line. Slope of zero. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now I've got to go over to my blanks and we've got to fill these in. At point B, you might have to flip back here. At point B, F prime of B is what? Negative. The derivative, so thus the slope of the tangent line. Are you seeing this? Yes. It is negative. Describe the change in the behavior of graph of F at this value. At now. Is that asking? No. This graph, it's not a min, it's not a max. It's probably something called an inflection point. My graph changes from being curved down to curved up. Do you remember those words? Mm -hmm. Concave down to concave up. You see it? So... Describe the change. I just have concave down to concave up. Okay, you ready for D? Yep. At point D, the derivative is? Undefined. Undefined. Describe the change in behavior of the graph of F at this point. Well, officially, it did go from up to down. It did go from increasing to decreasing, which is what my answer key has. Okay. okay. 
Does that necessarily relate? No, but increasing to decreasing. At point E, the derivative is? Zero. That was my horizontal line, so it's zero. Describe the change in the behavior of the graph. Think concavity, folks. Concave up. Uh-huh. Concave up to concave down. Okay, speaking of which, of these three points, which two are points of inflection? Where did my concavity change? And that was x equals b and x equals e. Can we answer five real quick that goes with it? Yep. Uh, I don't know. If a function f has a relative extremum at a point, then the derivative of the point is either zero or undefined. Is the converse of the statement true? Do you remember converse? Converse is the opposite, right? This is no. flipping the if and then, right? Yeah. yeah. So the converse is, let me write this so we have it. If the derivative, oh my goodness, no. is zero or undefined, then f has extrema. I think it helps if you see the converse, right? Yes. Okay. No, it's Is wrong. that statement true? No. No. No, not necessarily. Okay. What points justify your answer? Uh, B. E. No, because e, yeah, e. e is the one I have. I have at x equal e, and that's because the derivative of E is zero, zero but point E is not an extrema. Okay? Not an extrema of F. Thank you so much for bearing with me, folks. I appreciate it. Same time, same place tomorrow. Beautiful. We will continue in 5-3. I would say get 5-2 done. I'm going to be honest, I may or may not check them. Or I could do a quick check, I guess. I just may or may not take time for questions. How's that? Okay. But you know you'll have 5-3 after tomorrow, so you don't want to hold off and get behind. So. Fair enough? Yep.